What a horrendous year we've had. Life has been put on hold. Love has had to be expressed remotely. And loss of many kinds has left us all bereft. But even in the darkness, there has been a lighter side. We've had the Marsh family from Kent singing One More Day from Les Miserables, changing the lyrics to include lines like Have you seen my brother's hair? Do I change my underwear? Andrew Cotter, the sports commentator, has introduced the world to Olive and Mabel. And Twitter has been peppered with memes about toilet roll, home educating and banana bread. At least in the midst of darkness, we have been able to be light-hearted. There has been levity, lightness. But now that we've got to Christmas, I want to experience a different kind of lightness. Not just frivolity, but faith. Not just heartiness, but hope. And not just levity, but love. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overwhelmed it. But what does that mean? Firstly, you can hear this verse as saying that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness hasn't taken it down. The light has not been beaten by the darkness. There is something defiant in all this. We will not be beaten. No matter what devastation this wretched disease has caused, it will not take the light from our lives. This, my friends, is faith. Faith that good is stronger than evil. Faith that we are stronger than the forces that are aligned against us. Faith that we shall overcome. For me, it's about faith in God. With this faith, we are, says St Paul, more than conquerors. And he adds, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, and that includes Covid and Brexit and anything else we're up against, none of these things will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can't be separated from God's love. And the light that shines in our world cannot be beaten or crushed or extinguished by the darkness that surrounds us at the moment. And even as we have faced such adversity, I have seen some beautiful acts of defiance, like clapping for the NHS, or rainbows in windows showing our gratitude for our brave and selfless key workers, and volunteers delivering food parcels to the needy and those who are isolating and musicians performing for free outside the houses of the lonely and the isolated, and restaurants donating food to those who work in the NHS, and long-lost friends making contact with each other despite years of silence, and scientists working around the clock to formulate a vaccine that will finally make us immune to COVID-19. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overwhelmed it. The darkness hasn't taken it down. And secondly, I think the verse is a call to hope. I've heard people talk so often about a light at the end of the tunnel, of a springtime of hope after this long winter of despair. News of not just one, but three vaccines has given us something to hold on to, something to act as a down payment for our future happiness. We know that things are tough right now, but they will get better. But hope is more than just optimism. As the writer Denise Inge once said, optimism says that things will get better. Hope says that the good we envisage is the good we work towards. Optimism is largely passive. It's about waiting for what is better to come to you. Hope is active. It goes out and it does. It falls and fails sometimes, but it is tenacious and unafraid, and it survives long after optimism is dashed. Optimism daydreams, hope has confidence, it is awake. It will not let go of the notion that the good is real and that we can find it. You see, hope changes us. If the light of hope is shining in us, then we live differently. We have a completely different take on things. We live in the full and confident expectation that our hopes will be realised. And we will get through this. While we wash our hands and cover our faces and keep our distance and have ourselves a merry little Christmas, and it's important that we do all these things, 
we know as well that these things are temporary. And one day, one day we will meet with all our loved ones again and sing again and hug again and gather in pubs again and press ourselves into crowded venues again. We are people who are climbing to the light. At the end of Les Miserables, the cast sing one final song. Do you hear the people sing, lost in the valley of the night? It is the music of a people who are climbing to the light. For the wretched of the earth there is a flame that never dies. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. Now that is hope. The unshaken conviction that even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overwhelmed it. And finally, another way of hearing that verse from the Bible is that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So this is about understanding as well and wisdom. Jesus was often misunderstood. The Bible says that he was in the world and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. The life of Jesus and the teaching of Jesus confounded the wisdom of the age, just as it does today. Jesus shines a light on the way that we live and maybe we come to see things differently. Our experience of the last nine months has already been quite illuminating. As we've been locked down, surrounded by all our stuff, we've realised that our stuff alone just does not satisfy. As Covid has driven a coach and horses through industries and the economy as a whole, we have seen how some people have been left stranded. And as we have developed a heightened sense of our own mortality, we have asked questions, deep questions, about what all this is all about. And maybe the answer to all this, the answer to all our questioning, has something to do with love. Love matters more than stuff. Love matters more than our work or our status. Love is ultimately what makes sense of our lives. And Christmas is a reminder of the primacy of love. You may remember the scene in the great Christmas movie Love Actually when the Prime Minister says that general opinions starting to make out that we live in a world of hatred and greed. But he says, I don't see that. It seems to me that love is everywhere. Often it's not particularly dignified or newsworthy, but it's always there, fathers and sons, Mothers and daughters, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, old friends. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky suspicion that love actually is all around. This year, what has mattered to people is spending time with the people they love. Or if they can't, then finding some way of demonstrating their love or expressing how they feel. It's true, wherever you find love. It feels like Christmas. And of course that first Christmas was an act of love. God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to us. And Jesus showed us just how high and deep and wide God's love is for each one of us. God never abandons us. He's in this with us and for us. And he loves us more than you will ever know. So at least... In the midst of all this darkness, we've been able to be light-hearted. There has been levity, lightness. But now that we've got to Christmas, let us experience a different kind of lightness. Not just frivolity, but faith. Not just heartiness, but hope. And not just levity, but love. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overwhelmed it. Oh, Amen. 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 Have yourselves a very good, loving, hopeful, faith-filled Christmas.